So welcome back. Uh, we will discuss elements of a measurement system uh, in this lecture. We have seen the uh, measurement as a science and we have seen the applications of measurements and we have seen some of the fundamental methods of measurement which is which involves direct comparison and indirect comparison. And uh, now uh, we we would you know go into um, more into actually the indirect comparison because uh, Indirect comparison is actually what makes measurement as a science because measurements uh, are widely used in industries and it really matters in the industries or in the in the you know complex engineering you know uh, experimentations or in various you know various various critical applications where control is important measurement there and the accuracy there is very very important so so we would be more uh, you know interested actually into the indirect comparison where we have seen uh, as per the definition that we would have some you know transducers we will have some signal conditioning amplification filtering and obviously the other stages of a measurement system so so now uh, as a student uh, and as a learner so we should keep in focus that we are actually more into the indirect comparison of measurement uh, method so now um, that part leads us to the elements of a measurement system. So what are the basic elements of a, in any measurement system? Uh, or in, in this case, we can call measurement system as an instrument itself because an instrument actually for us is something that measures us and gives us some output. So a measurement system and instrument here is an analogous uh, you know, term. So now uh, an instrument is actually you know consists of a single unit which can give us an output reading or signal according to the unknown variable applied to it so in in very simple cases it could be some you know kind of a black box for us we have some input variable and it gives us some output variable or an output you know according to the input so this for us is an instrument or obviously a measurement system but in more complex situations, we have a measuring instrument which consists of several elements. Rather than just one element, we can have several stages of these you know, elements and we, we have an output and we have an input. All right. So this is typically the, the, the different stages in any instrument. We have you know, some standard stages that we have developed or we have defined. Uh, these elements obviously consist of some transducers and some you know, signal processing and then and some display elements which are part of the instrument itself so all these you know together actually make an instrument or a measurement system now theoretically we can break down these instruments into a limited number of types of elements so according to obviously to the you know, type of function that they perform but uh, we have some basic you know two frameworks or we can say a couple of frameworks whereby we define or we break down an instrument into different parts and why do we do these things or why do we break down them into different parts this is actually you know important for you know you know designing or you can say analyzing the the operation of a new instrument or we can also say that we can it helps us in the design of the new instrument so 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 in if any instrument that's already available to us we can actually understand its you know basic components or basic parts that actually it's composed of or we can also in designing new instruments we can look at these you know parts or these you know blocks or these and say elements that the instrument actually is composed of so it can help us in the design of new instruments also in the analysis of the existing instruments however we should keep in mind there is no such standard method for the breakdown we have, we have different types of you know you know ways to actually you know, break down these instruments into different comp you know, components or elements now these are the functional elements so we have a major measured variable or the measurement we do have something called a sensor or primary sensing elements this is the first part of any instrument where actually we have a measurement and we need to actually since that measurement so uh, measurement so the first part of any instrument actually is the sensor or it's also referred in terms of functional elements as primary sensing elements or pse then we have something called as variable conversion element we have variable manipulation element we have signal processing element data transmission element data presentation element we have data storage 
and finally the output so now in this case if you look at these blo this these blocks or this flow so there are almost uh, seven elements actually in which an instrument is actually you know uh, you can say you know in, in an instrument is composed of however you should keep in mind that it's not a, a any hard and fast you know conversion or any hard and fast elemental breakdown where you 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 can you you would say that you know every instrument has to be defined you know or has to be broken broken down into seven element uh, it's not like that however uh, some elements may have seven elements sorry some instruments may have seven elements some instruments may have uh, lesser or some instruments may have more and in some instruments you may see and this variable conversion variable manipulation and all such things getting repeated at different stages so there is nothing hard and fast but however these are some of the you know you know specific you know seven types of you know uh, elements that an instrument can be broken you know broken down into now coming to the first one that is primary sensing element in any instrument or we can say as a sensor here it basically receives energy from the measured medium produces an output depending on the measured quantity instrument generally extracts some energy from the major major medium so the measured quantity always is disturbed by the act of measurement therefore perfect measurement is therefore difficult to obtain the output of any primary sensing element is the, is a physical variable such as displacement or voltage the example is a thermometer bulb so let me now explain for example you must have seen a thermometer uh, a, a mercury based thermometer where we have a thermometer bulb okay so we have a mercury here and then we have kind of a capillary here and we have some read, readouts here all right so we are we are dipping this mercury in in some you know hot water this thermometer is being dipped in hot water so this part that is called as the thermometer bulb okay and inside it is the mercury so this actually this bulb actually is the primary sensing element all right so actually what it what happens is or what is meant by all these things that it, it extracts some energy from the measured medium so, so for example the temperature of the 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 hot water is 100 degrees celsius so because of this may this this uh you can see instrument or because of this obviously primary sensing element which is the bulb here because the, the the thermometer was at some different temperature and this is at a very high temperature so the moment we are dipping it into so this actually thermometer or any measurement system like this actually extracts energy from this medium and actually it it drops actually you know because of the heat transfer so obviously obviously is useful for us in measurements but because of this you know uh, the act of dipping this you know thermometer into this uh, in, into this fluid we would we would have some loss of energy actually from the fluid or from the liquid to the thermometer so that's why it says that instrument generally extracts energy you know from the major medium and because of that the temperature may drop to 99 point let's say 9 degrees celsius so obviously the major quantity is always disturbed by the act of measurement so therefore the perfect measurement may not be always you know obtainable so it's very difficult to obtain a perfect measurement so obviously the output is you know the displacement or voltage it can be displacement of the mercury you know inside this capillary so so this is about primary sensing element and obviously it varies in in different instruments the primary sensing elements are different but generally what happens with the primary sensing element is it, it receives energy from the measured medium because of the energy the thermal energy associated with the fluid here it is what actually is received by the primary sensing element and accordingly some changes take place in, in the accordingly let's say in this case for mercury expansion takes place and that expansion is proportional to the temperature that it receives uh, or the heat that it receives from the medium so that is something you know what a primary sensing actually element does now uh, there is something called as variable conversion element we have something it converts the variable to another more suitable variable while preserving information content of the original signal so in, th in this case the expansion of the 
in the thermometer uh, or expansion of the mercury hair cannot be let's say you know if it was not allowed to move into this capillary so it, there could have been a very difficult way you know, to understand the expansion the the amount of expansion that has happened proportional to the temperature so a suitable you know way actually to convert this expansion into some suitable way for example in this case we have we allow it to move into the capillary so that it it, it just forms a line or some height is taken and accordingly we can measure so this is a more suitable variable that we would desire so we have uh, an expansion of mercury being converted in this form or you can say the displacement form so that is converting the variable to another more suitable variable while preserving the information content of the original signal so this is what we see or the variable conversion element does for example pressure to force we'll see an example of a pressure gauge also where we have conversion from pressure to force so all such conversions of variables can take place then we have variable manipulation element it 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 is actually you know it, it changes the numerical reading value to some definite rule but a preservation of the physical nature of the variable i'll, I'll just explain this with a very more suitable example of a pressure gauge that will be certainly helpful for us but before that we will go actually into the some of the sensors actually that are used and what how energy you know can, uh, this you know conversion or how this you know uh, takes place so that we are more into it actually now these are the examples from the book if you see it, it talks about typical examples of transducer elements so in this case i have just given an example of a mercury bulb thermometer but if you just look into some let's say uh, you know again the same liquid in glass thermometer so there is a, so the principle of operation is there is a thermal expansion in volume when the temperature of liquids or liquid metals is raised and this expansion can be shown as displacement of the liquid in the capillary so this is what i have explained just now so in this case the input variable to the transducer or the sensor in this case or you can say primary sensing element is the the temperature of the fluid and what is the output variable of the transducer is the displacement okay so this this we have seen similarly we have for resistance thermometer so so, it, so it's, a, it's a different principle in which we have resistance of pure metal wire with positive temperature coefficient is varying with temperature so we have temperature again of the fluid as the the input variable but we have a resistance change in as the output so we can measure this electrical resistance rather than displacement because displacement we can just see visibly we may have to convert again it into some electrical form so that we can actually control this if you want to control this we want to you know you know, attach it to the computer or the controller which is again a digital device so some electrical or electronic signal has to be produced so displacement has to be converted accordingly into such things or such form but here we can convert it you know from temperature to directly to resistance change and this can be even fed to the controller so this is how because we have some metals whose resistance actually changes with the temperature so we can use this principle also so this is very important in the design of instruments actually you have to be very careful and we have to be, be very uh, you know have to be aware of such things because this is a very basic physics that uh, you know the the temperature of liquid changes or the liquid expands expands with the change in temperature or the, all right so such principles basically have to be under similarly for thermocouple so the principle is an emf is generated across the junctions of two dissimilar metals or semiconductors when that junction is heated so obviously in that case again temperature is the input and we have voltage as the output so similarly for thermistor pressure thermometer we have something called as pressure thermometer also we'll see an example of this so we don't have a you know liquid in glass sorry, or this resistance thermometer we can use something called as pressure thermometer so in this case temperature is the input we have rather pressure as the output so the principle is the pressure of a gas or vapor varies with the change in temperature so this principle can also be used so all these are basic physical principles or physics physics or, and the chemistry behind you know or the science behind you know that we have already studied in our you know can say class 10th and 12th but uh, these are now you know being applied actually in in the design of the instruments we have lvdts we'll see this on, later on also but you must have you must be aware of this this type of sensor also so this again you know converts displacement into the inductance inductance change so in this case we have differential voltage of two secondary windings varies linearly with the displacement of the magnetic core similarly we have potentiometer device electromagnetic generator venturi meter 
differential pressure is generated between two pipe main between the main pipeline and the throat of the venturi meter whereby the flow rate is actually measured it is measured in terms of pressure difference similarly we have hot wire anemometer again a device and we have to to measure the flow velocity so it, it gives us in terms of resistance change we have manometer so manometer is very popular whereby we can you know measure the pressure by the movement of the liquid column so manometer is very simple you must have heard about manometer so you have pressure applied here let's say here there is atmospheric pressure so liquid you know displace displaces so this displacement actually can be attributed to the pressure actually in the in the input from the input side so obviously the pressure is converted into in this the movement of the liquid column similarly bowden gauge is again used to measure pressure whereby the bowden gauge or you can say the bowden tube actually uh, because of its elasticity actually you know deforms or you can say displaces so we can measure the pressure with this so we have pirani gauge we'll study all these things spring balance resistance to engage piezoelectric devices so all such have some basic physical principles that are here and they are used actually as instruments similarly you can maybe later on look at these you know, other other you know um, instruments condenser microphone where the speech music or noise or you can say the sound is actually measured as in the form of capacitance change and all other things all effector sensor we have we, we measure the ma magnetic flux or current in terms of hall effect voltage change so all these things we'll study uh, some of them in detail in the coming lectures coming back to functional elements so we have seen uh, already that we have a primary sensing element we have a variable conversion element we have a variable manipulation element then we have something called as data transmission element in this case sometimes the functional elements are physically separated you need to necessarily transmit the data from one place to another place so for example you are measuring the 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 information so we have variable conversion element variable manipulation element and then we have uh, the data transmission element so in this case when the functional elements are physically separated so we need to transmit the data from one place to another so the, ex the example could be that we for example are you know, you know measuring the 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 strain on a on a shaft or on any machine member which whereby we will, it may be really away or at a distance from the uh, you know the, the the observatory so we need to actually measure or we need to actually transfer the data to that place or we may be measuring something on in space we may be something measuring something in like nuclear you know plants or some other you know hazardous places or in some distant places so that data has to be transferred so we have something called as data transmission elements for these instruments also so shaft bearing assembly telemetry system for satellites to ground by radio similarly we have data presentation element as one of the functional elements whereby the data is presented in the form of pointer display or playback we have some let's say you know we must have seen in instruments for example a thermometer a digital thermometer you have you know a, an output that comes to you in the form of you know uh, temperature and numerical values on the on the seven segment display or on the lcd screen so they are data presentation elements so in some cases it could be analog in terms of a pointer whereby you must have seen a weight weight balance or weighing machine whereby a pointer moves and then you can actually you know it points to the weight you know as per the uh, the weight of the person similarly you have something called as data storage element sometimes in 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 these instruments the you know data has to be you know presented in some form let's say we print print all the input, you know, data that we have actually you know measured or we need need to have something called as plotter or memory devices this is also very important because finally this data has to be used or this has to be interpreted or this has to be used for control so data storage also forms one of the parts of the instrument so as already i have told you that it's not necessary to have every element in the instrument some instruments may have all these functional elements some instruments may not have and some instruments may have you know, you know uh, these elements getting repeated at different stages so let's look at the example of a pressure gauge uh, you must have seen this maybe before or if you have not seen but let me explain so this is if you want to measure major pressure of the fluid or it could be pressure of the gas it could be pressure of tire or anything like that so this is how a typical line diagram of pressure gauge is so this is the fluid and we are measuring obviously the static pressure in this case so this this fluid at a pressure p 
you know, goes through this gauge that we have developed, and then we have a piston. So this is a piston, and this is the piston rod. Okay, so this is allowed to move through this gap or this hole, and then this piston rod is actually connected to the spring. So there is a spring at this place. All right. So this is how you know put up in this housing, and then we have a linkage mechanism whereby this piston rod is connected to a pointer through this hinge. All right, and then we have something called a display, whereby we display the the value of the quantity, physical quantity here. So the fluid pressure is the input here, and then we have piston, then we have spring, piston rod, spring, pointer, and the scale so these are some of the components so let me just put up here so we have fluid at pressure p we have piston we have piston rod we have spring we have pointer we have scale or display now this can be these all can be put under some categories which we have already studied it could be like primary sensing element, variable conversion element, variable manipulation. So what all these are, you can just see it here. So obviously the measuring measured medium or the measurement is fluid in this case. So now piston acts as primary sensing element and also variable conversion element because the pressure of the fluid is the measured quantity. Now this pressure fluid pressure because the pressure in the fluid, this, this you know, piston will get displaced. So, so there is no pressure that we can see, but we can see the displacement of the, uh, I can say the piston, you know, moving up or down. But uh, obviously, this displacement happens because of the force that is being applied because of the area of the piston. So this pressure, so pressure into area of the piston will give the amount of force that is being applied to the piston or being transferred by the piston. So in this case, we can say that it was pressure, but now it is force. So it, uh, primary sensing element is also piston, but variable conversion also happens because of the piston. So the pressure is converted to force. Now the piston rod actually is something called data transmission because this is happening at this point, but we have spring at this point. So this is data is being transferred to this point by the piston rod. So piston rod can act as data transmission element. So these are these are some of the ways we can actually, you know, uh, Put up these elements though there is no hard and fast about them that it has to be data transmission some of some of the ways you know some of the fra other frameworks or other methods actually don't consider them like this but it is one of the ways where we actually can basically analyze this instrument so now the force again is transferred to the spring now spring acts as variable conversion because of the force there is displacement of the spring and obviously that displacement is is a factor of the spring constant K, uh, but finally it allows or it finally gives us something called as motion. So the motion is actually the variable now. So or you can say displacement. So this variable conversion happens in the spring. Now the displacement of this spring or you can say according to the displacement of the piston rod here is now because of the linkage mechanism again converted to motion. So this motion here is I would say linear up and down. This is more of angular so the linkage mechanism converts this linear motion because of this linkage mechanism into the angular motion of the pointer all right and then this pointer and scale itself the scale and the pointer itself is known as data presentation element because they help us to actually read out what is the pressure in the fluid so they are they can be put up into dte or dpe that we have already you know, talked about so data presentation element and the observer watch that so this is how we can basically you know, uh, you know analyze an instrument having different you know, functional elements or we can it can help us actually to design new instruments similarly we have this pressure thermometer so this is a thermometer but this is pressure based whereby we have a liquid in glass again liquid in you know, some glass and it's at some temperature t we have a bulb whereby we have some let's say you know you can say mercury or it could be some other you know, fluid inside this bulb because of this you know the hot you know fluid there is heat transfer and then we have expansion of this liquid here that goes through this you know tube 
and then it enters something called as Borden tube. So this is the Borden tube that I was talking about. This is an elliptical cross-section based tube, you know, which actually because of the pressure, you know, this can actually expand like this. So this can displace and this displacement can be actually converted in with linkage or gear mechanism with the pointer and it can display the 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 temperature inside this fluid. So though it's actually doing pressure based and displacement. So again, here we have something called as prime ring sensing element. We have variable conversions, we have variable manipulation, we have data transmission elements, we have data presentation elements, all these things, all these components are there. And obviously we have you know, bulb as the you know one of the components we have the the uh, the the horizontal pipe horizontal you know, tube or pipe you can say we have Borden tube we have the linkage or gear mechanism we have pointer and scale this is how it can be now you know distributed so obviously we have fluid as the major medium temperature we want to measure so the primary sensing element is the bulb which actually senses this temperature and obviously converts it to pressure or you can say expansion of the fluid inside the bulb which is a different fluid and then because of tubing which i have told is horizontal tube this pressure is being transferred to the Borden tube again the variable doesn't change but because of the Borden tube it displaces so we have pressure being converted to motion so this is variable Conversion elements. Now motion is now transfer converted to the angular motion by linkage and gear motion or gear. So this is variable manipulation. So though this motion is angular, this is linear, maybe. And then we have data presentation as scale and pointer, and then we have the observer. I hope now this is to some extent clear. So obviously you can see clearly variable conversion is here also, variable conversion is here, so it has come twice. So there is nothing hard and fast that it should be once or twice or thrice nothing as such and then variable manipulations can also be twice with data transmission can also be twice another example of a remote reading shaft revolution counter you have a shaft at some you know remote place you cannot really go there to measure the you know rotation so we can do it with a sensing arm and then we have some micro switches connected to the solenoid which actually pushes the plunger and then you know this mechanical counter actually at different place these wires can be long enough to take it to the you know uh, the observer and then we can have this mechanical counter whereby we can actually count the shaft rotations so this is again you know uh, an example of an instrument whereby we can divide again this into some primary sensing element the variable conversion element the variable manipulation and then data presentation and other things one of the analogous frameworks for this breakdown or this uh, you can say breakdown of the instrument into different components is this one this is again another way although it's similar to that so we have a sensor transducer stage we have a signal conditioning stage we have a record out or read out stage this this way this way we just can divide this instrument into only three parts obviously this part is subdivided into different parts again but this is a, a, an analogous one so here we say measure and sensor converts it to some you know analogous input <coughs> sorry analogous output which is analogous to input obviously so then we have some driving signals because of the signal conditioning and then we have some recording stage it goes to controller or computer or recorder so as per this framework second framework we can divide this you know pressure gauge now where we will measure the pressure of the fluid directly through the Borden tube so the hollow Borden tube this is the cross section how it looks like inside so in this you have this fluid or this you know pressured you know, fluid which could be gas or which could be air or which could be maybe even liquid so this causes the displacement of this because this expands this boarding tube expands like this suppose so this displaces and this displacement is actually taken up by the lever and the gear arrangement this rotates or amplifies this and then we have recording on the scale or display on the scale so that's why in this case this this is known as the transducer or the sensor this is the boarding tube this converts pressure into small displacements and then this small displacement sometimes may not be really visible or it may not be really appreciable so we need something called mechanical amplification which is through lever and gear so we can have higher gear ratios so that we can see this displacement as amplified one and then obviously by display and pointer we can see it more physically you know more clearly so that is the third stage so in this this is called as sensor stage this is called as 
signal conditioning stage and this is record out or read out stage so similar to the previous one so this could be called as data presentation element this could be you know maybe variable variable manipulation element this could be public primary sensing element all those things are maybe variable conversion element together this could be variable manipulation so all such things these are just two frameworks that you have to understand actually how an instrument actually can be subdivided into different elements so now again in more detail this is from a book so we have suppose an accelerometer which is the at the sensor transducer stage in the signal conditioning system we can have filtering integrating circuit amplifiers so we have a signal which is with noise now signal with noise removed but this signal may not be enough to be appreciated by any you know any reading or a recording device so we need something called as amplification so amplification you know happens to the signal and then in this stage and then we we transfer it to some data acquisition or a computer and then to a printer or to a controller now just again some some of the sensor transducers signal conditioning and the readout and recording you know, you know examples in mechanical you must have you know obviously seen in the spring uh, in the in the in the pressure gauge we have spring mass which is the piston and the spring acting as the sensor or we have bowden tube generally used as the sensor or we can use gyro as the sensor so in hydraulics we can have orifice or venturi meter as the sensors we can have propellers as the sensors which sense the fluid velocity or we can or an op, optical we can have photoelectric diodes whereby we can use them as sensors we have transistors holographic plates in electrical we can have resistance as the sensor or capacitance as the sensor basic sensor or the primary sensor or the transducer itself we can see a piezoelectric crystals semiconductor junctions and similarly some of the examples of signal conditioning whereby it modifies transduced signal into the usable form by final form usable by final stage it increases the amplitude generally depending on the requirement or it may also filter the unwanted components and convert it into a pulsed form so in mechanical gearing is generally in a place the signal conditioning role where it actually amplifies the signal or cranks and slides or you can say mechanical linkages connecting links and cams actually act as signal conditioning there in hydraulics we may say, see piping valving dash pots you know, act as the 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 signal conditioning in optical uh, optics we have mirrors lenses optical filters optical fibers they act as the the signal conditioning elements or in electrical we mo mostly see in electrical in a system we have the bridges filters and uh, the integrating circuit some of the devices actually are mostly used as the the signal conditioning elements and the recording of the readout stages in mechanical we have indicators a simple uh, pointer and a scale and uh, in the in the electrical we have um, can basically processors and computers where we have various types of computing systems either special purpose or general used to feed read out or recording devices and all controllers actually are part of the recording or read out stage all right in the in the in the more uh, in the in the optical one we may have digital printing uh, pen and chart digital direct photography these are all magnetic recording these are all the part of the read out or the recording stage so these are two frameworks that we have seen now framework one where we have uh, almost seven elements functional elements and framework two we have just three parts whereby we can divide an instrument into just these three parts thank you